Lesson 36, Identifying Jesus. In today's lesson, we shall learn about how the identity of Jesus is hidden from some, but can be perceived through his miracles. We also shall see what some people were saying about his identity and how his own disciples discovered his true identity. When Jesus reveals God's plan for him to be killed, Peter tries to correct Jesus, but Jesus rebukes Peter as an agent of Satan. Jesus also teaches us to deny ourselves, be willing to suffer, and about the value of souls. In the first section of this chapter, we have the miraculous feeding of 4,000 people by Jesus. He took compassion on the crowds and knew if they went home hungry, they might faint on the way. For all those people who had witnessed this miracle, they had plenty of evidence to know who Jesus was. They might have remembered how God miraculously provided bread in the wilderness to the children of Israel, and therefore identified Jesus according to the same one who provided for Israel in the wilderness. When the Pharisees came looking for a sign of Jesus' power, he refused to show them a sign. He was not going to perform magic tricks to try and convince them. Had they been there to see him produce enough food to feed thousands, they would have all the signs they needed. In fact, Jesus performed so many miracles that it's hard to imagine how the Pharisees could not clearly identify who he was. Unfortunately, even his disciples lacked understanding of his power and miracles, for when he warned them about the Pharisees, they thought he was concerned about their lack of bread. Jesus must remind them of the miraculous provision of food on two previous occasions. Not too many people were able to clearly identify who Jesus was, and even today so many people have a false view of Jesus. Only when we come to know who he really is can we be saved from the penalty of our sins. A blind man is brought to Jesus and Jesus takes him away from the crowds and performs a two-stage healing. First he touches his eyes with spittle and then the man's eyesight was still fuzzy. He touches him again and this time he can see perfectly. I'm not sure why Jesus did not heal the man instantly. Perhaps this story was given to us to illustrate how some people, when they first encounter Jesus, cannot clearly identify him. But with more exposure to him, they come to know his identity clearly. This is the case with the disciples. Jesus had asked them, Whom do the people say that I am? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah or one of the prophets. Clearly most of the people had some vague ideas about him being one of God's servant or a prophet, but they did not clearly know who he really was. Then Jesus asked his disciples whom they thought he was, and Peter replied, you are the Christ. This was a much clearer perception of the identity of Jesus as the Messiah sent from God to the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus, hearing Peter's confession, strictly warns his disciples not to speak of this to anyone else. Jesus did not want people to be announcing that he was their long-awaited Messiah, for he knew that this would hinder him from completing his work before going to the cross. Jesus began to speak of the cross and how he would be killed and raised again the third day. It was Jesus' plain confession that he was indeed the Christ that led the Jewish leaders to cry out for his crucifixion. So we can see why Jesus was desiring to conceal this fact for the time being. When Jesus spoke of his coming death, Peter began to try and correct him, but Jesus turns to Peter and rebukes him, calling him Satan, because he was not thinking God's thoughts, but the thoughts of men. When Jesus referred to Peter as Satan, he did so because Peter's words were in agreement with the purposes of Satan to prevent Jesus from being our Redeemer. Peter's words may have seemed just and good, but in fact they were defying the Lord's words, and that was not his place to do. 
When God has revealed something in the Bible to us, it is our responsibility to accept it by faith, obey it, and not question it. When we begin to question God's wisdom and his words, we are acting like Satan, and that is a very dangerous place to be. After rebuking Peter for his foolish words, Jesus calls together the people and his disciples and tells them all that if they want to follow him, they must be willing to deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow him. To deny oneself is not an easy choice to make and must be done in faith and through the power of the Holy Spirit. This means to give up personal rights and become a servant to the cause of Christ, putting aside all personal ambitions, goals, and even friends and family. The path to secure our salvation was one of intense suffering and personal denial for our Lord Jesus Christ. If we also want to make an impact with the gospel and see others saved, we must also be willing to walk in his footsteps, be willing to deny ourselves and suffer along with him. True servants of Christ are those who have given up all their personal ambitions, willingly enter into a life of personal sacrifice to further the kingdom of God. Jesus also explains how valuable a soul is. He says that to save our life we must be willing to lose our life for his sake. This means we must not cling to our own life as though it belonged to us and we can do with it as we please. But we must be willing to surrender the rights of our life to Jesus as our Lord and Master. He asked the question, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Clearly he meant that there is nothing in all the world that can equal the value of just one soul. For those who will not identify with Jesus in his sufferings, are ashamed of being associated with him, and are unwilling to suffer along with him, they will be denied any honor when Jesus returns in glory some day. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Mark chapter 8 verse 36